Um, first of all, thanks everyone for attending my talk on management monitoring and tracing in RabbitMQ. Uh, before we dive into the presentation, let me take a minute to uh, introduce myself. My name is Rohini. I am a software engineer at McKinsey & Company. I've been working there for about two and a half years now. And my first um, introduction to RabbitMQ was actually earlier this year, um, where I was helping out a client with who were using RabbitMQ as part of their application architecture. And as part of a backend developer on the engagement, uh, it was a really great opportunity to get my hands dirty and learn more about it. So this talk is going to be from a developer perspective, um, touching a few features of RabbitMQ on how they are very useful in the cycle of development and debugging uh, when while building an architecture or an application. So without further ado, let's get into it. Right, so for the agenda that we have today, um, first we'll start off talking a little bit about two of RabbitMQ's um, very useful features, which are the management plugin and the Firehose Tracer. Uh, in the second half of the talk, which is going to be my favorite, we would be looking into how we can leverage these particular tools in sort of building custom tools and um, uh, through a live coding and demo um, to sort of like, you know, show the potential of all of this. Right. So let's start. Um, the first uh, that I want to look into is the management plugin it, uh, itself. So what is it, right? So the management plugin is this very handy tool that helps in managing and monitoring of the RabbitMQ nodes and clusters. So what this means is that not only would this provide a means to um, create and view your exchanges and um, um, queues, but also provide a ways to monitor different metrics, um, say queue length, your message rates and um, usage, et cetera. So this is all easily fetched through a HTTP API provided by the plugin itself. Um, RabbitMQ actually provides a very neat UI, a single page application to sort of uh, handle all of this management in a single place. Um, now, this is very useful for a developer because say you have, you know, um, um, you have created a exchange or a queue uh, via your code and you want to validate whether you created it properly with the right configurations or say you're sending a message from an exchange to a queue. Has it been binded correctly so that it's reaching from one place to another? Now, all of this becomes very easy and very you know visual to understand whether things have been configured right or it's been done right through this management plugin. So a very useful tool. In the next slide, uh, you can see a screenshot of what this management uh, tool looks like. This is the management UI itself. So as you can see, you have the different sections to manage your connections, exchanges, queues, and so forth. Uh, when go deep diving into a queue, you have the different options to add a queue, delete a queue, view all the queues you've uh, described. While clicking on a queue itself, you can look into the actual monitoring aspect, which I was just talking about, where you can see the rate at which messages are coming in or the usage of how much it's been, you know, the messages have been filling up, all of that. So yes, very useful tool. So that is the management bit of it. Now moving on to the tracing bit of it. Now, before we get into what exactly the Firehose Tracer does, let's understand the difference between the monitoring that we just talked about and the tracing. Now, you can think of monitoring as more like a polling API. So, you know, you're fetching a particular current results of, you know, either the messages or whatever uh, at that particular moment. Whereas in the Firehose Tracer or in tracing in general, you're kind of keeping track of all the messages that have been, um, you know, communicated so far. So not only would you have just you know, the current data, you would also have something like a history of data, which is very useful because in a lot of cases, say you have a background application running, uh, it is often noticed that before you could poll for a message, uh, it might be consumed by a different element. So in that case, you might not be able to actually see your message having been in that particular space. So in the case of tracing, you have the entire history. So you know what has you know, been exchanged and what has not been exchanged, what has not been acknowledged. So it has a very uh, 
sort of like a very nice way to sort of list all your um, messages along with the body. So you can also validate whether you have the right data present in the particular uh, messages or not. Right. So that sort of gives the overview of management and monitoring for us to get into this second bit of the talk. So now that we understand that, now let's get into building custom tools. Now, what do we mean by building these custom tools? Now, if you take the management API, uh, management UI itself, um, it is completely relied on the management HTTP APIs. This means that you can actually customize this as much as you want. Since uh, uh, your management HTTP APIs are directly talking to your you know, RabbitMQ to fetch in data, you have different um, request calls that you can make, which is your get, post, put, and delete for different um, elements, your exchanges, queues, connections. You can view the documentation to get an entire list of all the uh, actions that you can perform. Now, this can be easily wired to any kind of user interface. It doesn't even need to be a website. Uh, you can have a simple JavaScript code that is fetching details at regular intervals and you know giving out an update, or you can build um, a VS Code uh, um, extension. So you can do everything from your uh, editor itself. You don't uh, you don't have to move to a browser to actually validate a particular um, exchange or queue being in existence. So uh, another thing that also uh, we should touch upon uh, while building custom tools is that um, when you look at the management UI, it provides a endless list of, like it provides every possible data that you can get. Uh, say you just want a, you know, a fraction of that data and you want a very uh, simple minimalist tool for that. So you can actually leverage this for building that particular tool um, and, you know, someone who, uh, like a product owner on the team who does not want so much information on the very minute details, it would actually be a very cool idea to build a very small tool to um, show the potential of a particular application and how RapidMQ is running in the background. All right. Now, since we talked so much about, uh, you know, how we can build uh, custom tools, let me, you know, switch to a quick live coding on how exactly these HTTP APIs can be leveraged. So. I hope you, everyone can see my code screen. Um, so on Docker, I have my RabbitMQ instance running. So there is one running in the background. So if we look at our code here, uh, what we have is the HTTP APIs here. So this particular API, so I have an instance running on the port, uh, management port of 15672. Now the uh, API list itself, you can get it from the documentation here. The API that I'm using is to actually fetch the list of queues. So currently I've, it's a new instance. I've not created any queues. So I'm just gonna use Axios, which is a very cool way to get, uh, you know, run your um, particular um, uh, HTTP APIs on JavaScript. So we did a get call and similarly, we have uh, other operations that we can do as well. So currently this is the code to actually create a particular queue. So I'm creating the queue with the name of test on the um, you know default host. So to the same uh, particular instance, I'm just gonna make a call and uh, create a, a queue. So I'm gonna do that. That's gonna create my queue and let me just hit my get call again and that should return Sorry, oh, I didn't save my file, I'm so sorry. <laughs> right, so let's comment this out. Let's uncomment this. So this is the call to create a queue. So once that's created, let's do a get call again. And you can see that, you know, now you have a particular queue. So what you have here is the details of the particular queue that we just created. Uh, like I said, you have all the monitoring details of, you know, the queue status and, you know, what kind of messages are coming, uh, you know, the message of, of, uh, capacity and the usage that has been uh, done. And this is the one that we created, which is test. Um, and since it's a HTTP API, it doesn't necessarily have to be in JavaScript. It's not very restricted to a language. You can have it in any language. Um, uh, and it's completely configurable as long as, you know, you have something, you know, communicating with it. Right. 
So uh, this is how you can use the particular HTTP API. Now uh, let's look at the wrapper around these HTTP APIs, right? Which is getting to my favorite part. Now, this is something called rabbit trace. This is just to show the potential of when I say building custom tools. Rabbit trace is a Visual Studio Code extension that I built for helping developers manage and monitor their RabbitMQ queues and exchanges right from the editor without having to go to you know switching browsers or anything. Uh, what about it? That it has the same minimalist UI UX, very you know easily understandable. You can do everything from your editor, and there is a different uh, and it's it's a very easy toggle between multiple connections, even if you have. So uh, the underlying principle is the same thing. So you have your RabbitMQ nodes. On top of that sits your HTTP APIs, which you use to co communicate to it. And with VS Code uh, extension APIs, you can actually build a tool around the HTTP APIs that I just mentioned. And as a user, you can go ahead and do everything from your VS Code editor. Now, uh, let's just look at a quick demo of this. Let me close this so we don't have any distractions. Right. So what we can do is that we can create new connections. So uh, whatever connection that you have, uh, currently I already have my connection set, but you know your instance, whatever connection you want, you can sort of, uh, let me just pull this a little bit. Yeah, whatever connection you want, you can enter that, your management API URL and your username password, which by default is guest. So once you have that in, you can save it. Once you save it, it looks something like this. Uh, so once you connect it, you get the entire list of exchanges and queues right here. So what we just created a while back, which was test, you can see it over here. And it has a very cool feature of when you click on a particular um, um, exchange or queue, you get all the details related to it. So you have an overview describing the type and the arguments. You can go ahead, bind it to a particular queue. You can even publish a message. And uh, the same with queues. So when we click on test, which we had just created, let's give it a minute. Yeah. So we have the same overview. Uh, currently, it's binded to only the default exchange binding, which is done by default with um, RabbitMQ. And the same way, you can go ahead, publish uh, messages, and uh, you know, do whatever you would like with it. Now. This was really this was something that I built when I was working with RabbitMQ because I would use the management UI a lot. And it was a very simple way for me to get around without leaving my editor. Just check everything right from the editor, whether things are working, whether it's communicating properly. I would drop a message from here, see if it's being reached on this particular queue. So um right. So this is just one of the examples on what could be built. Uh, of course, there are different tools and uh, you know, websites you can build out of this. Um, currently, you can only publish messages and you can't receive messages because it's a work in progress, which comes to my next bit that it is completely open source. Uh, this, uh, you can go ahead, take a look at the repository, uh, you know, take a look at it, uh, to take a look at the uh, VS Code extension yourself and try it out. If you guys like it, give it a star and you can even contribute to it. And it, 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 for me, this was a great way of learning RabbitMQ's, you know, management view API as well, because there was a lot of, you know, APIs that you use, a lot of um, uh, sort of configurations that you sort of understand as you work through it as well. So, yeah, check it out maybe. And with that, um, my talk comes to an end. Hopefully, I, you know, do hope that you guys um, had a bit of, to gather about the management and monitoring and how you can build your own custom tools.